place to buy quality clothing in Las Vegas because the clothes are all quality. They will last forever. It's an investment in you. So, has anyone ever heard of the empty suit? Do you know what the empty suit is? Esther, tell us. Well, I, I don't want to say what I'm thinking. But. You say what you're thinking. We're all women and we're all friends here. Well, an empty suit to me is a person who is in a well-dressed, but that's it. Absolutely. You see a man, and he's well-dressed. He's got a custom suit, tie, starch shirt. And what do you think about him? What do you think? He's what? Successful, smart, financially sound, but it's only because of the way he's dressed. It's called packaging. It's like when you go into a store, you see something on the shelf. You may have gone in for a brand, but then something's packaged so beautifully, it just takes your eye. Packaging, you open it up, there's a little bottle in a big box, and you bought it, and you are stuck, by the way. That's what this is all about. It's all about packaging yourself to be your best. Let me say something, and you may not agree, but every woman is beautiful. It's just a matter of making the most of what you have. I have never, ever met a woman that wasn't beautiful. It's a matter of taking your best attributes, playing them up, and forgetting the rest. And we're gonna start about making entrances. Have you ever seen anyone walk in a room and heads turn? You absolutely know that there are so, somebody or someone because of their entrance. They don't even have to say a word. You just know. And everyone wonders, they turn their heads and say, I wonder who that is. Well, you can do that. It starts first with your costume. Stand up. If you walk in like this, you don't want to be like a soldier. I'm not suggesting military stature. Laurie, come on in. I'm not suggesting that. But your stomach in, your shoulders back, butt tucked, okay? And a pleasant expression on your face. You have to have an expression that's not a grin, it's not a grimace, it's not a big smile but a pleasant expression that says, you're approachable, I'm friendly, I'm confident. Lori, there's a seat over here. We just here, you can sit room. right here. No, 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 here. Welcome. Sit right Thank here. Thank you very much. It's my friend, Lori Gorgeous. Thank you, Lori, for right coming. Thank you. So your posture is critically important. Oh, no. Your facial okay, expression. Okay. You case the room. Whether you're confident or you're not, you own this room. Today, Lisa walked in. Lisa walked in like she owned the store. Why? Because she walked in, she was all dressed, she was confident, her gait was perfect, her smile was pleasant. She owns the room. She may not own this place, but she acted like she owned it, and she's the head turner. Your gait, gait, walking. Have you ever seen an important person walk quickly or rushing or dragging their feet or having their feet pointed or towing in or slithering along the floor so you hear their, sh their shoes and the flip-flops? No. Perfectly straight feet. Paced walk. Even if you're in a hurry, even if you're hairy, if you walk a little slowly, You'll slow yourself down. You'll calm yourself, by the way, if you have the right mental attitude. I'm going in. You may be scared to death. You may be going into a room of people that you never, ever met before. And of course, not all of us have the confidence that we need. But through your image, you will gain your confidence. Because if you look good, you feel good and you have exactly more confidence. So you walk slowly, you walk pleasantly, you glance around the room, your feet are not towed out, your feet are not towed in, you're not dragging your feet, which I'm sure you've all seen. You don't have, just look around you. If I hadn't named the worst dressed city in the world, 
It's in Las Vegas. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> People think body act. <laughs> so your facial expression is extremely important. Okay. Chewing gum. Why would anyone walk into a room chewing gum, cracking gum? That's part of your expression. That's part of your look. Very distracting. It cheapens you beyond. You want to chew gum, go in your bedroom and chew gum. Watch TV and chew gum, but not when anybody's next to you because it is so annoying that you can't even imagine. And it says something about you. Your clothing. Now, you might be all dressed up, but if the rest doesn't go together, it is the total image, ladies. That is what your image is. It isn't just clothing. Your dress has to be, first of all, appropriate for the time of day, appropriate for your age. It needs to be in fashion, and it needs to be right for your body type. There are basically, this is not hieroglyphics, different there's a V body type, okay, where you're big on top, you're little on the bottom. Or you're big on the bottom and you're narrow on top. Or you're just an H. Suffer. No, I'm okay. Uh, you just have no shake whatsoever. So, or you're a Marilyn. There are very few Marilyns in the group. So how do we compensate for that? If we have a big bottom, we don't wear big flower print skirts, short skirts. I have ugly legs. You will never see me in a short skirt. My arms have turned to cottage cheese. You'll never see me without <laughs> sleeves or stockings. By the way, no one has such beautiful legs. If your legs are less than flawless and have perfect legs, that's great. Go without anything on your legs. Otherwise, wear body makeup. They sell that. Do a tanning treatment so that your legs don't show. You're wearing backless shoes. Get a pedicure. Nobody wants to see your dirty, crusty feet. <laughs> Just travel by plane and you'll see them. <laughs> and they even put their feet up on the seat in front of them to show how they're not groomed, they're not kept up, but they don't care. Most of us here care or we wouldn't be here today Women care about their image. How many people here care about their image? How many love their image? Thank mm. no, you. Good. Come what answer do we have? <laughs> now, yeah. that, we're changing that. Yeah. We're absolutely so. If you have a body type, which each of us has a different body type, if you're tiny, don't wear long skirts and high boots like you're a giant. Most importantly, play down your bad points. They're not bad points, they're just the way we're built. And that is a gift from God. So what you do is you play that down. You're big on top. You're a Dolly Parton kind of person. That's okay. But don't wear it down to your waist because it cheapens your image. It's okay, it's beautiful. You can then wear a little flared skirt the right length if you're short, play up on your petiteness. Petite is beautiful, tall is beautiful, but make the most of it. We don't have time to go into all of that today, but there are ways to dress to make yourself look beautiful. The most important thing is don't wear anything that detracts from. Your face is the most important thing. That's what people see first, and we are judged Again, it says in the first seven seconds, those are the latest statistics. I'm outdated, I say in the first 30 seconds, it doesn't matter. People judge you immediately and they, do you know what transference is? By your image, by how you're dressed, by how you handle, handle yourself, they transfer certain attributes to you. So someone walks in, they're beautifully dressed, they're poised, they're done, but they're really an idiot. <laughs> because of these immediate judgments have transferred certain assets to them that they may or may not have. Now they may have them and they may not have them, but that's okay. It's called transference. So the first 30 seconds, what they see first is your face. So we're going to talk about accessories and makeup. Makeup has to be appropriate for the time of day. In the evening, 
the lights are dim, you can wear a heavier makeup, darker lipstick, darker, because in the dark you can't see as much. As we get over 40, and this goes for your hair too, none of the glitter, it stays in your creases, ladies. So you don't wear glitter over the age of 40. You look for matte makeup, which today is very hard to find. Ulta has some great kits. Get a good brush, one that can do the shadow, can do your eyebrows. And we got a guy coming. Oh, God help us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I have a comment on that, too. I have a comment on most of everything. Women are stronger, we're more resourceful, we stay stronger longer, and we are actually smarter. And we do have a sixth sense. There is a sixth sense that we all have. It's intuitive, it's nothing that we gave ourselves, it's something that the Creator gave us. So you all know that. And it is, I'm not saying there aren't any smart men, certainly that would be a dumb statement to make, but I'm not always smart. So anyway, let's go back to makeup. Eyebrows frame your face. You have to know how to put on makeup. You have to do it appropriate for your face. Blush should match your lipstick. If you're wearing a peach blush, you wear a peach tone or a brown lipstick. If you're wearing a pink blush, you wear a pink lipstick. Shadow, it depends how much. Minimally, women over 40 need to put on a little bit of shadow, a little bit of blush, and a nice lip tone. Okay? You need to learn how to do this. Eyebrows are important, they frame your face, but they shouldn't overshadow your face. I'm sure you've seen some of these women that get tattooed eyebrows. Oh, really? Then all you see is a tattoo. All you see are these two eyebrows walking in the room. And you wonder, what are those? Headlights and a raccoon? What's going on here? Look in the mirror. Invest in a full-length mirror before you go out. Look at yourself front and back. I didn't do that today. My tank was hanging out. Janice helped me. So I was in a hurry. But invest in a mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror. Shoulder length hair. Certain hairstyles are only for the 20 somethings. Long, straight hair. As we get older, our skin loses its glow. We need to glow it up. Long hair, straight hair is very, very unattractive. Short hair, go to a stylist, not somebody who does haircuts. Someone that will cut the hair too. The shape of your face, the way your hair grows. Everybody has a certain pattern to the way their hair grows. Oh, let me tell you something about myself. This is not about me. I am a licensed cosmetologist. I am a graduate of the Fashion Institute of Technology. I spent 15 years in the makeup business. I was man regional manager for 13 years for uh, Fashion 222 years for an international cosmetic company training line people all over the country. Uh, I'm a certified professional coach, but that wasn't my career. My career was as president and COO of a publicly held company. We had 80,000 employees. We sent out 80,000 last year I was there. And I used to designate dress code for different cultures. Every company has a different corporate culture. So, even for our salespeople that went in, we had over 200 offices. If you go into a Silicon Valley company that wears da da da, you don't go in with a shirt and tie. Immediately, you're not accepted. They don't want to buy from you, they can't relate to you. So, um, welcome. Um, what you knew you needed to do was dress to the corporate culture. If it was casual, that doesn't mean grunge. That doesn't mean jeans, a sloppy shirt, your hair like you just got out of bed. No, no, no. So, this is clothing and discarded, dated, or inappropriate items. It doesn't have to be business clothing. It can be your entire wardrobe. Discard, donate. There are many poor, needy people who need what you don't want. Believe it or not, there's a lot of, welcome, there's a lot of poverty in this country. More than what you imagine. There are poor people that haven't got the means to buy themselves clothing. And what's sitting in your closet will really be appreciated. So get rid of it. Have you repaired, dry, clean, or altered items that can continue to be worn? 
very what? honest with you. And then I never have anything to wear. Why? Because I always go to the sale rack, and it's a habit I'm trying to break. And you can find good things on the sale rack. Don't, don't get me wrong. So determine what your next five purchases are going to be. In other words, plan your wardrobe. Don't just go out and buy randomly. Spend money that you're going to regret later. Create a regular schedule for maintaining your hair, your nails, your feet. Oh, do it. <laughs> there are budget places. Don't go around looking like the Wicked Witch of the West. It's inexcusable. <laughs> Not for anyone else, for you. Because if you look good, you feel good. You have more confidence. You can walk in and own the room. <laughs> Everyone has that power within them. Everyone here. Every woman has it. So if you wear eyeglasses, update the frames. Consider contact lenses. Dental work. Do you need dental work? Do you need tooth whitening? And consider purchasing a magnifying mirror and a full length mirror, which I've already said. So those are investments in you. Now, grooming we know about. Um, you can meet someone who is beautifully coiffed, elegantly dressed, well-spoken. They come up to you. They stand in your space. Your space is sure, um, 18 inches from someone. Don't go right on top of someone. That's rude, inexcusable. <laughs> people do not like people going in their face. What are these? <laughs> breath mints. You could have everything all together, but you have bad breath. Oh, oh what a turn off that is. Yes. Socially, mm -hmm. in business, in romance, <laughs> in life. Sugar free. Yes. <laughs> and if I have bad breath, I'm sorry, I drink coffee. <laughs> Your speech. Your speech connotes class. Your social class, the social class you came from, how you enunciate, do you use vulgarities, do you have a good vocabulary, that shows where you come from. It shows your social status. My speech is not good. I have a Brooklyn accent. It's not standard English speech. And I have reached a point in life where I really don't care anymore, <laughs> but I used to care, <laughs> and so in business. But your speech is very, very important. If you want to have a good quality of voice, because if your voice is squeaky, if it's rasp, if it's guttural, okay, people, it grates on people's ears. So, what you need to do is listen to your own voice. Take a recording. Ask your friend if you're concerned about your image. If you're not concerned about your image, well, then that's, you don't have to worry about how you sound, okay? But I'm sure you've all met people who grate on you, who you cannot wait to get away from because their voice is just so annoying. Have you met anyone like that? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so your speech is extremely important and your voice quality, your pronunciation, your use of curse words, um, your vocabulary, how fast you talk or how slowly you talk. People that are important always speak slowly and deliberately. People who are insecure speak quickly. Can't understand them. They're going too fast because they're nervous. So always take a few deep breaths, no matter what you do. Going in, speaking, meeting people. Really important, your voice quality, your speech, your enunciation, the tone of your voice. All of those things comprise just your image. It isn't just what you're wearing. It's the whole package. So people say, yes, I met her. I know who she is, but you've left a good impression on them. And they want to be with you because people want to be with people who are important and successful. Just human nature. <laughs> they gravitate towards people who look good, sound good, are knowledgeable. That's the way we are. We're built that way, most of us. 
etiquette. Oh, do you shake hands when you meet someone? Do you whoop them directly in the eye? Eye contact is so important. Listening. Listen to people. It's not all about you, even though you may think it is. Ask people. Uh, ask them questions. Open-ended questions that get them to respond. Don't be with the I, 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 I went here, I did this, I that, I that. You want to know, I, my children went to that school. By the way, nobody cares. If you want to have a good social life, and be liked, which all of us want to be liked. Is there anyone here who doesn't want to be liked? No, we all like, it's human nature. We don't want to be disliked, so I guess we want to be liked on the other <laughs> hand. Um, ask about them and listen to them. Listening is so critical. Look them in the eye if you meet someone. If you're in a group of people, don't address just one person. Look around the group and make eye contact critical. Don't interrupt people in the middle of a sentence. I was at a party, not to say them, <laughs> this Thursday night. <laughs> I'm talking, and somebody like drops me in the middle of a sentence and like, okay, what am I, chopped liver? Be courteous, be polite, use etiquette, always good manners sets you apart, by the way. Welcome. Please, thank you, you're welcome. So simple. Hold the door for someone. What does it hurt? It's all part of your image. It shows you have breeding and class. If you think that is out of date, you are so wrong. I want you to remember one thing. If you remember nothing I said today, which you may not, because we only remember 70% of what we hear. Cream rises to the top. It's just a fact. Whether it's milk, the cream rises to the top. So if you have etiquette, you have manners. People respect that. They still respect it. And everyone wants to be respected. There isn't a person here that doesn't want to be respected. We all need that. We don't want communication skills extremely important. How you communicate with people. Okay? If you are emailing, speaking, writing, if someone does something nice for you, what is wrong with a handwritten thank you note? It's etiquette, but it's also good communication. Okay, Rhea is my CPA. She's, I got a letter from him yesterday and I was gonna say to you, I already paid the bill. Why are you sending me another bill? No, but she did. It wasn't a bill. It was reminding me very politely to send out my first quarter estimated taxes. Good communication, whether it's social, business, uh, romantic communication, extremely important. How you say, very often in emails things, because they're short and sweet, they're misinterpreted. Speak to people, communicate well, and be knowledgeable. By the way, Know what's going on in the world. If you're going to have any kind of relationship with any group of people, be knowledgeable. Know what's going on in the world. Know what's going on politically. I don't mean to take sides. Read books. Know what's in the movies. Know what's happening in the world. It makes you an interesting, vital person, a person that people want to be around. If you're so inclined, you can engage in sports. I've never accomplished that. I don't know football teams. I don't care about football teams. But I do make it my business to read a couple of newspapers, watch the news, see what's in the movie, see what the best-selling books are, have something to say and something to contribute when you're in a group. You can't be a dummy. There are a lot of women I know, none of them here. All they can talk about is the college their kids went to, so what did you do, lady, in your life? Uh, the, the school their children went to, uh, what their children are doing, what their husband, how their husband treated them. Drivel, drivel, drivel. Don't be a driveler. Be smart. It doesn't take a lot of time. Turn on the news in the morning. Read the bestseller book. In fact, even read a few of them. Huh? Read the newspaper. You will be a more interesting person, a person that people want to be around, that people gravitate to, that people invite you. You know, 
It's very important to have a social network. If you're not working anymore, people here do work. There are some people who work here and work very hard. That's important for them. But most of us want also a social network, a romantic network. Be a good listener. Make direct eye contact. Use your manners. You will get invited. People will like you. You may be like not a likable person, but don't show it. <laughs> Networking is important. If you go into and you want to be joining new groups, don't hesitate. Again, let's start from the beginning. Walk in like you own the place. Da -da. Don't interrupt people's conversation. Go up to a group, wait for an opening, and then say, hi, I'm Rosemary. Just like that. You don't interrupt them, but you do introduce yourself. You do work the room and do a whole seminar on networking, on social networking. Very, very important, especially when you're in business. But if you're not in business anymore, you don't have all the friends, you don't have all the things that you want to go to, join them, but know how to integrate the group. Really important. But as everybody all had to out what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, picking your teeth in public. Yeah, okay. The ladies that take out toothpicks while they're out at a beautiful restaurant oh, yeah. pick their teeth or Gross. start putting hand lotion on or lipstick. Gross yeah. out. Personal things are done in private, not in public, especially at the dinner table. Get a life. <laughs> Debbie, your favorite. <laughs> Yawn, cough, or sneeze without covering your mouth. Oh, oh gross. Wow. No one carries tissues, especially mm -hmm. men today. They spit on the ground. Oh, you know, in New York subway system, there used to be a fine. No spitting, yes. smoking. Abuse the wait staff. That is the most classless thing it to is. do. I wrote annual reports for my company, not because I had to, just because that's what I like to do. And one was, the theme was, the dignity of work. We were an employment company. The dignity of work. Any job that you do, if you're a bus boy, if you clean the floors, there is dignity in work, and there is professionalism in every occupation. It doesn't matter what you do. Now, if you abuse the wait staff, that's not demeaning to them. That demeans you. It shows you are classless, that you have no respect for people, and that you're insecure because you feel a need to abuse mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. That's your insecurity. And people with you will notice it. People won't want to go out with you. It is totally embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who does that. I'm not mentioning any yeah. names. She's not here today. Yeah. But she does this. She abuses the ways that constant requests, sending things back. I would like this. <laughs> I would like that. Oh, really? Do you think you're Queen Elizabeth? You're a person. You're a customer. And that person deserves as much mm -hmm. respect as you do. By the way, Cheryl, your favorite? Grimace when the food is presented. Oh, yes. Or someone else's. Someone orders something and you go, ooh, how can you eat that? Or yours. Grimace. <laughs> that is totally gross out, ill mannered, and rude. That person may love what they're going to eat. Why would you, ooh, do that?